We're going to prove that the sequence whose nth term is square root of n plus one minus square root of n converges. Or written another way, we're proving that the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n plus one minus the square root of n is equal to some real number. What do you think it is? What do you think the limit here is? Well, as n gets really big, the difference between the square root of n plus one and the square root of n is going to become pretty negligible. And so we'll be proving that this limit is equal to zero. For an example of how the square roots of consecutive numbers get very close together, consider the square root of 10,001 versus the square root of 10,000. The square root of 10,000 is equal to 100. The square root of 10,001, obviously it's a little bit bigger than 100, but it's less than 100.005. So already, when we get to 10,000, the difference between consecutive square roots is very small. Let's go ahead and get into the proof that the sequence converges. Always good to start off with our typical convergent sequence proof framework. We take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, and we have to try to find some big n value that's sufficiently large so that the rest of the proof will work. What we need from this big N value is that for all terms of the sequence after the big Nth term, we have that the distance between those terms of the sequence and the limit, which we suspect is zero, is less than epsilon. Again, this is the distance between terms of our sequence and zero, since zero is what we're trying to prove is the limit. To figure out how big we need big N to be to make all of this work, let's begin with this expression, the distance between terms in our sequence and the limit, and do some work with it. And I recommend giving the rest of this proof a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. If you want a hint, remember to use conjugates. The conjugate of an expression like A plus B is A minus B. So hopefully you've given it a try, made good use of the conjugate hint. Let's see how it works. We can of course drop the minus zero from this expression. So it's equal to the square root of n plus one minus the square root of n in the absolute value bars. Then do we actually need these absolute value bars here? Are they doing anything? They are certainly not, because n plus 1 is greater than n, and so the square root of n plus 1 is greater than the square root of n, and so the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n is greater than 0. Since this difference is greater than 0, the absolute value bars aren't doing anything, and we can drop those. So this is equal to the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n. Again, that's because this is always positive. Now we'll go down a line and bring in our conjugate. If we multiply this expression by its conjugate, we'll see some magic happen. And remember, the conjugate of an expression is found by simply changing the sign in the middle. So the conjugate of square root of n plus one minus square root of n is square root of n plus one plus square root of n. So we're multiplying by that, but of course we do want to preserve the equality here. So if we're gonna multiply it, we also have to divide by it. So it's like we're multiplying by one. Now we'll move this over to the side and distribute in our numerator. First, we'll have square root of n plus one times square root of n plus one, which is of course n plus one. Then we have square root of n plus one times plus square root of n. So that's plus square root of n times square root of n plus one. And then here's why we use the conjugate. The next term is minus square root of n times square root of n plus one. So that's the opposite of what we just had. So minus square root of n times square root of n plus one. See how those two things are gonna cancel out, which is great. And the last term will be minus root n times plus root n, which is minus 
n. And then in the denominator, we still have square root of n plus one plus square root of n. All right, like we pointed out, these two terms in the middle will add to zero. So we can just delete those to make some more room here. And what we are left with is n plus one minus n in the numerator. Then of course we see there's more cancellation. n and minus n will cancel out and leave us with just one in the numerator. So this turns out to be equal to one over the square root of n plus one plus the square root of n. Now, don't forget where we're trying to go with this. We want to show that this expression is less than epsilon. So far, we've shown that it is equal to this. So right now, we want this to be less than epsilon. We're going to achieve that by making this big n value sufficiently large so that n being greater than big N will force this inequality. Now, if we didn't have two different square root terms here in the denominator, then it would be super easy for us to solve this inequality for n to figure out how big it needs to be. But of course, we have two different square roots, n plus one and n. Is there any way we can fix that? Well, what if the denominator was square root of n plus square root of n instead of root n plus one plus root n? Well, the square root of n is smaller than the square root of n plus one, so this would make the denominator smaller. And when we have a smaller denominator, the whole number is bigger. So by changing root n plus one to root n, we get a bigger number. And then of course, square root of n plus square root of n, we can just rewrite that as two square root of n. And remember, doing something like this is nice because we can work with this pretty easily. And if we can show this is less than epsilon, then we'll still be good. We'll have that this is equal to this, which is less than this, which is less than epsilon. So in total, we'd have that this is less than epsilon like we want. Now we've just got a final little bit of work to do. We want that expression we just got, one over two square root of n, to be less than epsilon. So now we do the scratch work of solving for n to figure out how big it needs to be. First, to get n into the numerator, we can invert both sides of the inequality. Inverting the left side just gives us two square root of n. Inverting the right side gives one over epsilon, and when we invert, we need to flip the inequality, so that's greater than. Now divide both sides by two, so square root of n is greater than one over two epsilon, and then square both sides, so n is greater than one over four epsilon squared. And that is basically the final piece to the puzzle. Let's drag that on up here. We don't need it in the proof, but that's the key. Since we want n to be greater than one over four epsilon squared, and we have that n is greater than big N, we want to choose a big N that's greater than one over four epsilon squared. And remember, it's by the Archimedean principle that we know for any real number, we can find a bigger natural number. So our proof will take a big N value greater than one over four epsilon squared, then we would go through all this work, and now we can finish things off. Looking back at the expression where we stopped, N is greater than big N. And so, of course, the square root of n is greater than the square root of big N. So again, if in our denominator, we replace the square root of n with the smaller number, square root of big N, that will make the whole number bigger. And we'll write that over here. So we get a bigger number by putting a smaller number in the denominator, square root of big N. This is less than this. But again, instead of having big N in the denominator, we could get an even bigger number by replacing N with the smaller number one over four epsilon squared. So this is less than what we would have if we put one over four epsilon squared in place of big N. And now we're home free. This is equal to one over two times the square root of one over four epsilon squared, which is one 
over 2 epsilon. Then these 2's will cancel out, so this is equal to 1 over 1 over epsilon, and that is equal to epsilon. End of proof. And hey, that was fun. We had to do a little bit of work, but nothing too crazy. We've shown that for any epsilon greater than zero, if we choose a natural number, big N, greater than one over four epsilon squared, then the distance between every term of our sequence after the big nth term and zero, that distance, is less than epsilon. So the terms of our sequence get arbitrarily close to zero. And so our sequence of differences between the square roots of consecutive positive integers converges to zero. Jiminy Cricket, she's a sage of whiskers. Hallelujah, she's a sage. She's got more wisdom in those whiskers than the yeah.